Hello and welcome to Linear Relationships videos and uh, in this one we're sketching lines using y equals mx plus b. In the previous video we introduced the idea of y equals mx plus b and now we're going to use it to actually sketch a line onto a number plane. Okay, without a table of values uh, we can also just quick do a quick sketch of positioning a line using y equals mx plus b. When we know the y equals mx plus b form of the rule that the line is following, we can learn enough to position that line on a number plane. Okay, so b we uh, found is the y-intercept. It tells us where the line meets the y-axis. m, the number in front of the x, is talking about the gradient or the slope of the line, particularly when it's in fraction form. It tells us the rise over the run, the relationship between how far up the line goes and how far across it goes. And uh, when that m number is positive, we know the line leans to the right. And when m is negative, the line leans to the left. So if you're not sure of those things, I went through pretty quickly there. Have a look at the previous video. That's got a bit more on that and uh, go through it a bit slower. So let's have a look at uh, sketching. This time we're asked to sketch y equals 2x minus 1. So let's uh, find out enough about uh, how to position this line on the number line so we can avoid having to do a table of values, which might take a bit longer. Uh, and let's see uh, how we can do that. So that, that number to the right there, uh, that minus 1, this is the y-intercept. We know already, just by looking at that number at the end there, that this line, if we positioned it on the number line, would be... Um, would be going through the y-axis at minus 1. That's a good clue for a start. And uh, also the number in front of the x there, the m, is the gradient or the slope of the line. Now we'll, it's much more useful in fraction form, so uh, 2 is a whole number. Let's put it as 2 over 1. And then from that we can say that the line rises 2 for every 1 it goes across. So if we know where the line crosses the y-axis and the, re the relationship between how far up it goes and how far across it goes, we only need to know one more thing uh, to position this line on the number plane, and that is to uh, figure out whether it leans to the right or the left. Now that uh, m number there is 2 in this case, which is a positive number. You can see from the, uh, the rules at the top there that when m is positive, the line leans to the right. So that's uh, three crucial things that will allow us to position this line on the number line uh, without um, doing a table of values. Let's have a look. So we know from our, our discussions just then that the line meets the y-axis at minus 1. We also know the gradient is 2 and it rises 2 for every 1 it goes across and that the line is positive so that the line, uh, the, the, the leaning to the right is, uh, is the situation for this line. So step 1, to position this on the number plane Let's start with the y-intercept. So we saw that the, it uh, will plot the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept was of minus 1, so we know that this line crosses the y-axis at minus 1. That's the first step. So we'll put a blob there at minus 1. Now this is a crucial bit. From there, we'll go from that y-intercept. From there, we'll do the rise and the run. We are told that from the number 2 there in front of the x, when we put that in fraction form, that this uh, line will rise 2 and run 1. Now, you might be saying, well, why did you go across to the right here? Okay, I could have uh, run 1 and put a dot there as well, but that would mean that the uh, line would eventually, I'm going to join these dots in a minute, th th that line would lean to the left, and I know that um, this line leans to the right because that number in front of the x is positive. So I've got to make sure that when I do the rise and run, that I'm creating a line that's leaning to the correct way, according to the number in front of the x there. So I want the line to lean to the right, so I'll put another blob there. I've risen 2 and I've run 1, and all I do now is to join the dots and label the line. The line rule was y equals 2x minus 1, so we'll put that on there to show that all the points on that red big arrow there are following that rule, y equals 2 times whatever x is, take away 1. Okay, so I take those three crucial issues uh, that I found out in red there, and I've transferred each of those facts onto the number plane carefully. And that's where y equals 2x minus 1 would be sketched. Let's have a look at this one. y equals minus 3 quarters x plus 2. What can we learn from this rule to allow us to sketch this line on the number plane very, um, very easily? If you sketch this, uh, this is the y-intercept there. We know this line that we're going to eventually sketch will cut the y-axis at 
plus 2 this time. And the gradient is minus 3 quarters. Well, let's worry about the minus later, but let's have a look at the gradient. The top number is the rise, and the bottom number is the run. So we'll know that this line rises 3 for every 4 that it runs. And our last uh, piece of information, we need to figure out or uh, recognize whether this line, we expect it to lean to the right or the left. Now you can see that that m number, the number in front of the x, is a negative, and so this rule up here tells us that it should, we'd expect that line to lean to the left on this occasion. So it's a negative uh, m number in front of the x, so the line will lean to the left. Let's see how that translates onto the number plane here. So here's our number plane. Step one is, like before in the previous example, the line uh, meets the y-axis at plus two, so let's plot that as our very first step. So we'll put a blob on plus 2 on the y-axis, the vertical axis there. That's our good starting point. Okay, from that, from that y-intercept point, we'll do the rise and the run. Now it rises 3 for every 4 that it goes across. This time I've gone to the left because I need to create a left-leaning line. Okay, I could have risen 3 and run 4 and put a, try to put a blob over there, but if I join those two dots, uh, that would create a right-hand leaning line. So that's an extra thing to just think about there. So it's almost like we should think of these two steps at once, really. It'd be best if they were combined steps, really. We'll always use the y-intercept, but it's a matter of whether we use that point there or that point there. And for that, we're having a look at this, not this uh, negative sign here and this rule here that says when that m number is negative, it leans to the left. So a few things to think about at once here. But uh, we'll then join the dots to create that final line and label the line. I'll just write or print in this case <laughs> the uh, rule for the line on the line there, especially when there's more than one line on a number plane. Okay, so the differences there, the uh, y-intercept wasn't much different, it just uh, where the line crosses the y-axis, that's okay. This bit here was a bit trickier, it rises 3 and runs 4, but that negative tells it's going to lean to the left, so that tells us to go up and across the left uh, this time when we're creating our rise and run. Okay, so that's how you sketch a... Uh, sketch a line using y equals mx plus b. From y equals mx plus b we're getting three facts really and uh, using those to plot or position that uh, line on the number plane successfully. And it's a bit quicker than using a table of values as well. So I hope that helps. Next time we're going to have a look at some other uh, linear relationship issues and concepts uh, but in the meantime you can check out anything you like maths wise on peterblakemaths.com. See you next time. Thanks for listening.